Hey everybody, G4Video5 here, and welcome back to some more Grand Theft Auto 3. In this part, we will be completing King Courtney's missions. This is King Courtney. Me yachty posse can do with them rude boy driver and people is saying you the man. Get to the waste ground opposite the stadium in a car and wait for the other hopefuls. I've got to be watching checkpoints all over Staten. First driver to a checkpoint gets the bling bling, then it's on to the next stop. If you get more checkpoints than any other driver, I can have me a little work for you. So this first mission from King Courtney, who is the leader of the Yardie Gang here in Staten Island, is a lot like the first mission that we do for El Burro called Turismo, as we're going to be competing in a street race, except this mission's street race is a bit different, because what we're going to end up doing is collecting as many checkpoints as we possibly can out of 15 total checkpoints that are going to spawn across Staten Island. And we have three other competitors that we're going to be racing against. One competitor is in a Bobcat, another is in a Patriot, and the third one took a sweet time there to get on screen is in a Cheeto. And you're going to notice right here that when this go flashes up on screen, these other competitors take their sweet time to start accelerating. They take, it a, they take a second or two before they start moving. So what you could theoretically do in that situation is when the go flashes on screen, instead of accelerating and, you know, beginning your endeavors collecting as many checkpoints as you can, you can... Uh, actually exit your vehicle, pull out a rocket launcher, and fire rocket launcher shots at these other drivers to, sh to try blowing up their vehicles. And if you happen to destroy their vehicles, you will not fail the mission. So you can expand on this by not only doing that uh, tactic at the start of the race, but you can also go to one of these checkpoints and not collect the checkpoint, but just park nearby, exit your vehicle, pull out the rocket launcher, and just aim the rocket launcher in the, in the direction that the other competitors are driving from to get rid of the competition. And it's definitely a strategy that you can try implementing if you happen to be struggling with this mission, as I wouldn't really put it past you know people if they <laughs> did have problems with this mission, because these AI drivers are insane bastards. They are... Um, intense in the way that they drive because they swerve in and out of traffic they make these sharp turns and sudden u-turns if they need to change directions drastically you know they have no regard for anybody else on the roads or on the sidewalks so it's entertaining to watch them but you know there's certain situations where they might be real close to you so it's kind of annoying having to dodge where they're going because if they ram into you i mean they can just swerve you out and cause your car to take massive damage there so you know there's a lot of things you got to kind of be on your be on your toes about during this mission because you have that and then you also have just the normal traffic driving around the place here in Staten Island. I mean, you know, you know how those taxis can just kind of gang up on you all of a sudden. So you gotta watch yourself there. But uh, in regards to these checkpoints, um, these checkpoints have um, set patterns that they will spawn in as. And I believe that there are four or five different patterns that you can potentially get during this mission. So the pattern I'm currently receiving is one of the better patterns I think because uh, these checkpoints when they spawn in don't spawn too far away from each other because that could potentially be problematic for you because if you collect a checkpoint and the pattern has the next checkpoint spawn across the entire island then it's highly unlikely that you're going to end up getting that checkpoint because there's almost always one of these competitors that are like stuck behind a tree where they can't move, so when a new checkpoint spawns, that kind of corrects their AI to where they, you know, reverse out of their stuck position and make a U-turn to the spawn location of the new checkpoint, so, um, you know, there's different elements at play here, and I'm gonna be honest here, uh, I, I have literally never gotten 15 out of 15 checkpoints before because you only need the majority of the checkpoints. Uh, anything beyond 8 checkpoints is just extra. So to get 15 out of 15, I mean, I was... My, my heart was racing when I was doing this attempt here. I mean, I was sweating bullets. And let me tell you, I, I opened a nice cold can of Coke there because Taylor Swift advertises for Coke, and I'm a fan of that. 
I need to see if you're capable of doing me dirty work. See if you're family or not, don't you know? Two of my boys will be there any second to take you for a ride. See if you're the article or a sister or something. We're going for a little ride into Epburn Heights. Kill me some filthy Diablo boo boo spin batting up me Lady Queen Lizzie. You do the driving and the shooting and the dally in a boot. We'll make sure you don't get cold feet. Here, you'll need a piece. Laughing vampires dance. Feel the voodoo. Let's drive. So this mission has one of my favorite moments in the entire game, and it's not because of anything impactful to the story or anything like that. This mission is mostly insignificant in the grand scheme of things, as the only thing that really comes from this mission is that we're killing some Diablos because they were dissing Queen Lizzie, who we can assume is like the girlfriend or wife of King Courtney, and uh, the Diablos end up hating us after this mission. So they will attack us on sight if we're ever in their territory in Portland, which is kind of annoying, but it's not that big of a deal since they don't have any guns. They just have either their fists or baseball bats, so they're not overly intimidating. Um, but it's kind of weird because you can still do El Burro's missions even after completing this mission, where the Diablos apparently hate you, so... I don't really know how that works, but uh, the thing that stands out to me during this mission is that um, when you enter the perennial during that mission, during this mission's cutscene, um, the radio station named KJAW gets set and starts playing, and something that's scripted is that the song Dance of the Vampires by the Scientist will always start playing. And I don't know why, I'm just like a sucker for moments like that where a certain song sets the mood and tone of the mission. And it's just one of those things that really massages the ears in a satisfying way. Excuse me, some filthy Diablo. Remember, you and this to the end, man. Hold your corner. So there's a few things I want to point out. The first thing is that if you were to leave the perennial for more than five seconds for whatever reason, then you will fail the mission and the Yardies who are with us will start shooting at us. So we would like to avoid that um, as, as best as possible. Um, and the other thing is that you don't necessarily have to use the Uzi to kill 10 Diablos. You can actually just run them over. And I prefer just running them over because you're less likely to attract police attention to yourself. Okay, that should do it. Now get us back to the yard. Go, go, go now! So I don't think it's overly necessary to show off the Porter Tunnel again, so I'm just skipping ahead to when I'm dropping these guys off in Newport. Okay, you're the kind of man we like as friend now. You're hiring, man. Huh? Real shooter. so we can do some naughty thing on our enemy turf. I want me a Mafia Sentinel, a Yakuza Stinger, and a Diablo Inferno so we can hit up any gang in Liberty. Drop them off at the garage in Newport and hear this. They're no use to me all broke up now. So I'm going to point out that I'm going to skip ahead and... <laughs> Damn, that blue banshee back there was like right up on my ass. Uh... Yeah, but um, I'm going to skip ahead to Hepburn Heights slash the Red Light District, as we've already seen the journey you've got to take to get to that point in Portland from the previous mission, so I don't find that it's overly necessary to show it off again. But uh, I will say that, unfortunately, with the Diablo Stallion, not the Diablo Infernus, like King Courtney said during the cutscene, is that this vehicle does not have a parked spawn location in Portland, so you would have to find it somewhere on the streets in Hepburn Heights slash the Red Light District. Now, with the Mafia Sentinel, which we will be collecting after this Diablo Stallion, um, and with the Yakuza Stinger, both of those vehicles have uh, set parked spawn locations, so we're just going to end up going to those instead of finding them on the streets like we did with the Diablo Stallion. Now, something that's kind of annoying 
is how narrow that alleyway is because if you damage your vehicle that you're turning in you will potentially have to get it repaired at the pan spray depending on how much damage has been done to it so you gotta watch yourself a little bit now with the CRD Lobo I mean I don't really have to watch myself because it's not a car I need to turn in I'm just driving this thing just so I can go back to Portland for my Mafia Sentinel but um, you know that's the thing though when I when I ended up stealing this uh, this Yardy Lobo, another Yardy Lobo started trying to drive into me, and that's something that can potentially um, screw you over when you're collecting these vehicles, is that, let's say with the Diablo Stallion, that there was another Diablo Stallion driving nearby, well that one would start attacking me by, you know, aggressively driving into me and stuff, so that can lead to some issues where maybe you have too many of those gang cars that are nearby ramming into you, so they kind of cause you to maybe flip over, or they just cause enough damage to you by them crashing into you to where your car catches fire, so you can't take it to a pain spray to get repaired, and then you have to start the process all over again, so... You know, thankfully with the Mafia Sentinel and Yakuza Stinger, we don't really have to worry about that, but that is something that you would have to potentially watch out for with the Diablo Stallion, so there's just a heads up for you. But uh, with the Mafia Sentinel, though, um, we ended up going around to uh, Portland Beach to then get to this location where we can run up this slope that leads to Salvatore Leone's mansion and we can steal one of these Mafia Sentinels that are parked outside of the mansion. So this makes it to where we don't even have to really go into Mafia territory, or at least where the Mafia gang members end up spawning, as Mafia gang members have shotguns at this point in the game, so it is in your best interest to avoid making contact with Mafia gang members because it is insane driving through St. Mark's when they're aggressive towards you and they have shotguns because, I mean, you're just asking for trouble there. Uh, the shotguns are incredible at blowing up vehicles, um, especially when multiple Mafia gang members spawn in with shotguns. I mean, they can just insta-kill you sometimes, so... Um, it's definitely the most dangerous area in Liberty City at this point. So that's why I like using the beach area to kind of sneak behind everybody and steal one of the Mafia Sentinels that way. So uh, there's something I wanted to touch on about King Courtney's cutscene, where a lot of the time he'll say something, but the subtitles don't match what he's actually saying. And that kind of happened with the Diablo Infernus, as he referred to the Diablo Stallion as. And the reason why he did that was because in early development of Grand Theft Auto 3, um, Rockstar initially planned on having the Diablo's gang vehicle be based off of the Infernus rather than the Stallion, but we can assume that that idea was scrapped because Portland is the industrial side of Liberty City, and you really don't see too many sports cars driving around that place. In fact, the only sports car you end up seeing in the entire island is the Banshee that spawns in Harwood at that, um, at that car dealership. So... You know, it definitely makes more sense for any of the gangs to not have a sports car, especially one like the Infernus. So, <laughs> you know, it would have been cool, though, to have them drive around with an Infernus, though. That, that would have been pretty neat, but it wouldn't have made much sense in the way of just their general location in Liberty City. So, anyways, uh, we are now on to our final gang vehicle, which is the Yakuza Stinger. One of my favorite vehicles, because it's like this dual color that they have going on. That silver and then the red. It just looks really, really nice. And I've heard people say that the uh, Diablo Stallion's flames look, like, really tacky. But I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just, uh, uh I have poor taste in vehicles, but I also like the Diablo Stallion's cheap-looking flames. There's something about it that has a bit of charm and makes you feel pretty cool when you're driving around with that thing, plus you have the engine popping out of the front of the car. So, I don't know, I'm a fan of all three of these vehicles that we had to collect during this mission. I'd say the Mafia Sentinel was my favorite, though. Meredith, get your little self over to Bedford Point. There's a stash in an old jalopy. I need quick smart now. Ooh, looks like Rockstar is cheaping out on us now. We only had a 10 second cutscene right there, but uh, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, I gotta say, this is probably one of the creepiest missions in the entire Grand Theft Auto series. And you'll see what happens once certain events unfold. But something to remember at this point in the game 
you know, in the way of this game's story, is that the uh, the Yardies and the Colombian cartel have an alliance that they formed, as we heard about during Kenji's mission, Strand. So, because of this, both of the leaders of these gangs are likely in cahoots with one another. So, you know, us having the end result of this mission makes a lot of sense, because once we enter this, uh, this Esperanto that's parked here, we're gonna get a letter from an old friend of ours, and I'll try reading that letter. I hear you've been a busy boy. Well, I've been a busy girl. I think it's time you witness the real power of SPANK! And then you get something there. Uh, die, pig, dog, die. So, <laughs> that letter was from Catalina, who is the leader of the Colombian cartel, and she's also the same person that betrayed us in the opening cutscene of this game, so... Ooh, things are coming full circle here. She's aware of our presence in Liberty City as we're making these moves, and she's allied with the Yardy gang, and now they're using, uh, these suicide bombers to try killing Claude, and these suicide bombers have some of the creepiest dialogue in the entire series. It's almost like they're happy exploding on your face. <laughs> No oh, man, I just remember as a kid uh, that I was like super creeped out by this mission because of these suicide bombers and the things they said and how almost gleeful they were to, you know, suicide bomb Claude. Oh man, plus I didn't know what the hell to do because there were so many suicide bombers coming at you from different directions, so it was just really tough. And uh, I wanted to show off the uh, that that distinct when you nut but she's still sucking look that these guys have. Um, and I guess you could pause it back there if you wanted to take a uh, closer look. I don't know, it's just uh, it's creepy all around what we have going on here, but thankfully that Uzi strategy paid off quite nicely. Now, after completing this mission, uh, the Yardi gang will now be aggressive towards us, so King Courtney's missions can prove to be quite dangerous. Not only do you have those aggro drivers during the first mission, but you also end up getting the Diablos and the Yardis um, angry at you. So, I guess uh, do these missions at your own risk if, uh, if you're not going for 100%, because if you are going for 100%, then yes, this all was required. But uh, anyways, that completes this part. In the next part, we will be continuing Donald Love's missions, so until then, I will see you next time.